Ladies and gentlemen of the Line Golf Academy, get ready to witness the golfing greatness as we dive into the remarkable driving distance ability of the rising star, Min Woo Lee. In this exclusive swing analysis, I'll uncover the secrets behind his explosive power, but be aware because I'll describe why his motion will destroy his back and yours if you try it. If you do get some education or enjoyment out of this, it'll be very helpful to show your appreciation through likes and comments or even subscribe if you feel daring enough. After all, it's free. It really helps us as we donate finances from this channel to the Hilda Hood Foundation in South Africa to help introduce golf to low-income children. But enough of that hogwash. Get ready to witness the power of the great Min Woo. Happy Sunday, Lion Golf Academy members. Guess what? Welcome back. Here's Min Woo Lee. Now, today's episode, we're going to look at this motion that he has, which is a phenomenal motion. Why he's able to hit the golf ball so far, but in my opinion, this swing will probably not last another decade, maybe two decades if you push it. And it has everything to do with the amount of rotation he exhibits at impact, and what cause and damage that can do for the lower back region, which most of us face with in golf, specifically when you get a little bit up there in age. But let's take a look at the set. So, left side of the screen, we can see our patented look at that golf club going right through the hands right through the center of the chest right through the head so this is that nice neutral position he is in his spine tilt that golf ball is truly connected to the center of his spine we see the feet about shoulder width apart right side of the screen we have that lower plane line intersecting that spine angle at again 90 degrees this is one thing you'll find in common with a lot of these tour pros both men and women is that 90 degree setup so this is something you look at but you can also look at the evenly distributed feet so if you draw that from the center up he gets pretty close to where they cross so to me that's a pretty nice setup he has plenty of spacing and you'll be amazed at how much spacing he is actually able to keep and increase at impact which allows him to hit this golf ball incredibly far let's take a look at his swing we see that hand kind of pull back a little bit quicker than the body rotation and we can tell that because if we draw this line out straight in front and connect it to his hands a one piece takeaway would you'd still see the club in that position so we know his hands are getting involved soon but it doesn't matter because he still maintains his width he has one of the widest swing arcs i've seen specifically post impact and that's very important is post impact width right side of the screen let's take that club back to the same position and we can see that a frame esque takeaway where the club is working its way higher sooner so the hands are not low on that lower plane line as we see some of the tour pros and as a result we can see that left shoulder raising up a little bit sooner this is a very important motion for him because he's trying to keep that spacing for his hands and arms to move down specifically with his downswing when he pulls that club back in so he has a little bit of a loop outside to in which is normal for most of these guys and girls that hit it pretty far. Let's take it back a little bit further when the club reaches about three quarters. Now we can see the rest of that upper body turning. The hips are starting to turn, but he's creating a lot of X factor. We get to the very top of the swing, and this picture here is worth a thousand words. Let's go to the top on the left side of the screen, and we can see how he gets to that top plane line a little bit higher than where he needs to be. So again, we look at that shoulder tilt. The shoulders actually come up a little bit, but he will counteract that with his first move down. He'll actually drop that club in. But what that has done for him is it keeps his grip in alignment with, again, that center of his swing. If you get the butt of the grip matching where your center of your swing is, now you're ready to go because things are balanced and not tipping forward or pulling back behind. So in essence, to stay in the center, he has to get his hands a little bit higher and his move on the way down, he'll start to pull that club down immediately. Left side of the screen, we see a beautiful shoulder rotation, definitely past 90 degrees. And where are those hands? Those hands are well in connection with those shoulders that haven't moved back. And as a result, that club does gets nowhere near to parallel. So if you see your club getting to parallel, make sure you have about 140 degrees of rotation. If you don't, you got to get that club more in, in connection with your body. And this is something I stress for many amateurs, even myself when I go and play, my arms get very long because I lack turns. So you have to get the flexibility up. If you don't have flexibility, your hands and arms will take over for you. He has not swayed over the right side, so he's still sticking on that right brace line, and he's still in his spine angle. So we draw that yellow line, you can see it's matching the spine angle. So things look pretty set. It's a pretty simple takeaway, not a lot of moving parts, which makes it a lot easier to pull that club down into impact, create the spacing you need, and just release with all the effort one thing you will also notice is his spine angle is slightly increased on the right side of the screen and that's just because he is moving down most of the tour pros typically move down a few inches because they're getting the weight to their feet so they can push up and into the golf ball and that is something i also stress but in order to do that you have to be pretty athletic and also have flexibility too not only do you have to move slightly right or left but we're trying to push a golf ball up in the air specifically on the tee shot because the ball is floating in the air so we don't have to strike down we're just trying to 
strike up. So there's no better way to do that than to steal some ground force and be according in like with your feet and legs because they spring down and you can spring and jump back up. And now let's take a look at that first move on the right side of the screen. We can see the first move, where does that club go? It rides straight down. I mean, most of this first move, even though his lower body is turning, you can see those arms drop down that little line that we've got there because these arms are still staying connected to his body. Once it gets underneath that upper plane line, now we can see starting to move towards the golf ball and that is the lower body turn and the upper body turning as well to get that motion. So we see the hand path is gonna work its way down eventually down that line. So now he's holding his angle. He's already connected his hands to that lower plane line. And now his goal is just to hang on to that angle as much as he can. Now, in order to do that, you can probably throw a basketball through this little area here. This is incredible. And that has to do with that A-frame takeaway where he gets his arms a little bit higher to create the spacing needed for this motion. It also has to do with him getting that weight. You can see him pushing off that right toe. He is delivering on the left toe slightly, but he's also staying down. You can see how much he's still down and he's moving his lower body left. And what that does is it makes sure that your butt stays in that lower brace line, which will allow you to maintain your angle. And for him, he's actually increased his angle by going down. And from this point, he will just rotate his upper body to catch up with his lower body. Left side of the screen, we're going to look at that same motion. So we'll see the hands drop right away. Now the hands drop from this side, we can see how much the lower body is getting active. And I want to back it up a little bit here. So we're going to draw a angle between his hips and his upper body. So we're going to see how important that is. Okay, once he gets set up, now for him, some people get to that left side pretty quick and they start driving and that's their way to get the weight over to the left side. But because his swing is very rotational from the lower body, watch that gap. It doesn't even break. It actually stays. It increases. So his left hip is working directly behind him. So his left hip is turning so much. And this is what we see with people with very fast hips is they don't get that left side right away because if they get that left side right away and then turn, it's too late. One of the side effects for that is his spine angle actually straightens out slightly while he does this motion. But that's not important because the right shoulder dipping down and then he's going to drive his upper body will allow that spine angle to return back to where it needs to be. He is holding on to an incredible amount of lag and he does a great job. If we fast forward a couple frames here, he is still holding on to that lag. One more frame, still holding on to that lag so we can see how much power. His hands are already over that golf ball and he's still stored up this amount of power. So this is an incredibly quick motion. I cleared up some of these lines here and what's important too is we can see the space in between his left forearm and his arm and his left side of his body. You can now probably throw a tennis ball through there and that is a very rare thing to accomplish specifically at impact and he only did that because his hips were moving behind him. So his left hip was pulling so far back that it created that spacing for him to do that. As he strikes the golf ball, we can see, look at the hands, the hands release at that golf ball, creating all that power. And the great thing about this is once that club is at parallel, which is about here, look how high it is in relation to his body. Usually when we see hands and arms manipulating, that club is parallel down over here because the hands have to flick through. But this is just a dead sign that that club is so connected to his body. And we take a look at that triangle, it is still truly connected to his spine. So his hands have never really veered off of his spine, which is one way to get that golf ball to go as hard as you can. Now the cool thing with that motion is now look at his spine angle. It's actually tilting back. So his head, you can see how much his head has traveled down and behind him, but he didn't fall back there. That was just a result of storing so much power and getting that last ditch effort for his shoulder tilt to occur. Now we're gonna make more sense of that on the right side of the screen. Let me clear up some of these lines. Now on the right side of the screen, watch his hips. His hips are gonna turn a little bit more right about here. Now we see that driving. So now he's straightening his legs. So that's why he went down first. So he can straighten the legs right at impact. And this helps you create a little bit more club head speed, a little bit more hand speed, which is more important. So as long as you can increase your hand speed and keep them up in front of your chest, that's the goal. Now at this point, we can take a look at that club head. It is slightly open to his spine angle. Now what gets that club head down to impact is not necessarily his hands. Watch his shoulders now because his lower body is opening up to the target about, I'd say about 50 degrees. His upper body is still closed about 10 or so degrees. So he's carrying about 60 degrees of, of X factor down into this golf ball. Now what's going to close that gap is his hips are going to stop turning and look at the shoulders. So the shoulders now are catching up to the hips, but they never really catch up because right at impact, we can see they're still slightly open to the target where that lower body is completely facing the target. 
yards. So he still carries X factor down into the golf ball. He has now returned to his original spine angle, but look at his head motion. It is still hunched down. And then past impact, we can see those hands are still gonna be out in front of his chest. Still has a lot of spacing here. Right shoulder, look at how much tilt that has, which puts a lot of pressure down in this lower back region. So his club's gonna exit the original upper plane line, and then his hands are gonna be slightly higher than that because of that tilting. And then he comes on through, and we don't see a lot of excess motion. And what do we see here? The club is returning back to its original spine angle and it intersects that lower plane line. There's a slight bit of ma manipulation with his hands, but he times it really well. It's a very simple motion, very powerful. But hopefully with this explanation I'm gonna show you next is why you do not want to swing like this because it is just asking you to go to the hospital with some lower back issues. Okay, so the right side of the screen is what we're looking at and why I believe this is gonna eventually end his career prematurely unless he addresses this. So the way the back works, you have different sections of the back and they work differently. So the thoracic vertebrae, which is the upper part of your back can rotate between 30 to 35 degrees, about three degrees each vertebrae. Now the lumbar, which is the lower part of your back, can only rotate about 10 degrees total, which is about two degrees of rotation for each vertebrae. In total, they rotate about 45 degrees in each direction. Now one of the consequences to the lumbar spine is if the thoracic spine does not rotate well enough. So if the thoracic spine does not rotate, the lumbar spine is forced to rotate more, which could play a role in low back pain injury. So in other words, if this upper body is not keeping up with the lower body, it's going to put a lot of pressure in that lower right side of his back. There are three main injuries in golf. Number one is the lower back. Number two and three is the wrist and the elbow. So while he is young, he is limber, his body works a little bit differently than it would in 10 or 20 years. You better enjoy this, but it's a beautiful swing. And let's just keep on going to the left side of the screen to finish this out. So as we get going now, we see him get to that left impact line. So before we had cameras, before we had high-speed cameras to see how the swing works, we would always see that and say, okay, that's where we have to be right away. But in reality, all that is is momentum pulling him to the left side. So bottom line, the downswing is always going to be momentum-based. The backswing is going to be position-based, and one will cause the other. If incorrect positions are there, your momentum is going to suffer. If correct positions are there, you'll have correct momentum to pull you naturally to the left side. Now, obviously, you need some work and attention, so I highly suggest you work with the PGA Pro or LPGA Pro near you to help you get that education required to attempt something like this. But I hope you enjoyed that. If you do, hit that like and subscribe. It really helps us grow as we do donate funds from this channel to the Hill Hood Foundation for Juniors to get them into golf. So I hope you enjoy that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Have a great rest of the Sunday. Fairways and Greens. <laughs>